we are asked to calculate all critical points of the function, then determine if each point represents a relative maximum, relative minimum, or a saddle point. The first step is to determine the critical numbers by determining where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or do not exist. And then step two is to perform the second partials test. Let's begin by determining all of the partial derivatives that we need. Let's first find the partial of f with respect to x, which means we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The partial of f with respect to x is equal to 4x cubed, and then differentiating 16xy squared with respect to x, treating y as a constant, gives us 16 times 1 times y squared, giving us plus 16y squared. The derivative of 2y to the fourth with respect to x is 0. And now let's find the partial of f with respect to y. So now we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of x to the fourth with respect to y is 0. The derivative of 16xy squared with respect to y, we multiply by 2 and then subtract 1 from the exponent on y, which gives us 32xy. The derivative of 2y to the fourth with respect to y is 8y to the third, giving us plus 8y cubed. Let's also find the second order partial derivatives that we need to perform the second partials test later. Let's find the second order partial with respect to x. So now we differentiate the first order partial with respect to x with respect to x again, which gives us 12x squared. We also need the second order partial with respect to x and then with respect to y. So now we differentiate the partial with respect to x with respect to y. So we differentiate 4x cubed plus 16y squared with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us 0 plus 32y, or just 32y. And now we also need to find the second order partial with respect to y, which means we differentiate the first order partial with respect to y with respect to y again, treating x as a constant, which gives us 32x plus 24y squared. And now let's locate the critical numbers by again determining where the first order partials are both equal to zero or do not exist, which means we need to solve the system of equations 4x cubed plus 16y squared equals zero, and 32xy plus 8y cubed equals zero. This is a fairly complicated system of equations. Let's go ahead and solve this first equation for x cubed. Let's first subtract 16y squared on both sides. And now let's divide both sides by 4. Which gives us x cubed is equal to negative 4y squared. And now let's solve the second equation for y cubed. For the first step we will subtract 32xy on both sides. And now let's divide both sides by 8. This gives us y cubed is equal to negative 4xy. So now we have the two equations x cubed equals negative 4y squared, and we have y cubed is equal to negative 4xy. Notice how the first equation has a y squared in it. So let's solve the second equation for y squared by dividing both sides by y. This gives us y squared is equal to negative 4x. And now we'll perform a substitution. We will now substitute negative 4x for y squared in the first equation. So performing that substitution gives us x cubed is equal to negative 4 times negative 4x. 
which gives us the equation x cubed is equal to 16x. And now if we set this equation equal to zero, by subtracting 16x on both sides, we have x cubed minus 16x equals zero. We should recognize here that we can factor. If we factor out the greatest common factor of x, we have x times the quantity x squared minus 16 equals zero. x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares, giving us x times the quantity x plus four times the quantity x minus four equals zero. Let's continue on the next slide. Solving for x, we have x equals zero, x equals negative four, and x equals positive four. So we're going to have three points to consider where the x-coordinate of the points can be zero, four, or negative four. The next step is to find the y-coordinates of these points by using the equations from the system of equations we will use x cubed equals negative four y squared, as well as y squared equals negative four x. Actually, we'll just go ahead and use y squared equals negative four x. Notice when x is equal to zero, we'd have y squared equals negative four times zero is zero, and therefore y is equal to zero, and the z coordinate is going to be f of zero comma zero. To find f of zero comma zero, we evaluate the original function at the point zero comma zero. Next, when x is four, we have y squared is equal to negative four times four, giving us y squared equals negative 16. This equation has no real solution, and therefore we can eliminate the point where x equals four. And then we have x equals negative four. So when x is negative four, we have the equation y squared is equal to negative four times negative four, giving us y squared equals 16. If we take the square root of both sides of the equation, we are going to have two solutions. So we need to include a plus or minus on the right, which gives us y equals plus or minus four. So there are two points where the x coordinate is negative four. We have negative four comma positive four where the z coordinate is f of negative four comma four. And the second point where x equals negative four, y would be negative four, and the z coordinate would be f of negative four comma negative four. Now let's find the function values to determine the z coordinates. I've already done this to save some time. f of zero comma zero is equal to zero. f of negative four comma four is equal to negative 256 and so is f of negative four comma negative four. Just remember, we're evaluating the original function to determine the z coordinates. We have three critical points to consider. Zero comma zero comma zero, negative four comma four comma negative 256, as well as negative four comma negative four comma negative 256. The next step is to perform the second partials test by determining the value of d as well as the value of the second order partial with respect to x. And I've already set a lot of this up on the next slide. So again, we're gonna be using the second order partials that we already found on the first slide, which I've copied here on the upper right hand corner. We first calculate d when x equals zero and y equals zero, which gives us zero. Next we find d when x is negative four and y is positive four, which we see here, which is equal to 32,768 and then we find d again when both x and y are negative four, which also gives us 32,768. Notice how at the point zero comma zero comma zero, since d is zero, the test is inconclusive. So we will analyze the graph at this point in just a moment. Notice d is greater than zero when x is negative four and y is positive four, as well as when x is negative four and y is negative four. So now we need to find the sign of the second order partial with respect to x, which I've done here below. Notice in both cases, the second order partial with respect to x is 192 or greater than zero. So looking at our notes here on the right, because d is greater than zero and the second order partial with respect to x is greater than zero, we have relative minimums at these second two points. 
So now let's go to the graph of the surface and verify this, as well as see what's going on at the origin, 0, 0, 0. So looking at the graph of the surface, notice how we can see we have two low points here, which verify we have two relative minimum. And then at the origin, notice how we actually have a saddle point because the first order partials are both equal to zero, but we don't have a high point or a low point, and therefore, again, this is a saddle point. So to summarize what we found, we have a relative minimum at both negative four comma four comma negative 256, as well as negative four comma negative four comma negative 256, and we have a saddle point at zero comma zero comma zero. Another common way to express this information would be to say that the function has a relative minimum of the function value or z value of negative 256 at the locations of negative 4 comma 4 and negative 4 comma negative 4, as well as a saddle point at the origin 0 comma 0 comma 0. I hope you found this helpful.